Why do kids go to their fathers? Because mom said no. <laughs> and they figured they could get a yes <laughs> if dad's a soft touch. How many soft touches do we have here? Dad's soft touch, well, admit. I see some wives raised up their hands for their husbands. <laughs> and what I'd like to deal with you this morning, this Father's Day and Happy Father's Day, is what do you think God thinks about you? I would imagine some people would say, uh, I don't hope he doesn't think about me because if he was thinking about me, he would be thinking about my mistakes. He'd be thinking about my record. He'd be thinking about my sins. He'd be, he'd be thinking about my guilt. I, I have a rap sheet that goes from here to the moon and back, and I just don't know. You know, I read somewhere in the Bible where it says, we're going to give an account for every idle word that I'm in trouble. I could tell right away I'm in trouble. So I don't think that God should be thinking about me. And the truth is that what we believe about God shapes how we perceive him. And it will dictate how we worship him. What, what we think, if we're, if we're thinking that God is a judge, an angry judge, we come to him in a certain way. If we think of him as a father, we come as a child. The way we think about God is going to have an effect on our attitude and the way we come into his presence. We sang the song a little while ago. I called, you answered, and you came to my rescue, and I want to be where you are. If I called, and I did, and he answered, and he did, and he came to my rescue, I want to be where he is. It's what we think about God. My dog has never said a word to me, not one syllable, no word was ever to me, but I know exactly what my dog is thinking. Every time I come to church, I get into my office, I sit at my desk, Max comes and jumps on my lap, and he's saying, I want to be where you are. <laughs> and when I go home, I have an office at home. He jumps on my lap, does the same thing. So I know what he's thinking. And you know what God is thinking about us? God thinks about us. When we are following him, he thinks that we love him. That we're concerned about where he wants to take us. It's what we think. So much of what we think goes into our relationship with our Father. Jesus told a story 2,000 years ago. It's an incredible story. It's been with us. Some, so many people know it. I think everybody. Is. He starts off real simple, and he, he goes with, uh, there was a certain man, a certain man. If he was a certain man who had two sons, he was a dad. And it's amazing that Jesus could tell a story and wrap up that story so quickly that the entire gospel is connected to it. A certain man, you'll discover by the time you get to the end of the story that that certain man is a father. You could see right away he's a father. He has two sons. If he's got two sons, that means he created them in his image. That's what fathers do. So God created his children in his image. But there's something wrong, and you could tell when you go through the story, there's something wrong with the image. The image was marred. I'm only dealing with one of the sons, but the both sons had a marred image. It's the picture of the human race, wrapped up in one verse. A certain man had two sons, and the younger son, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them, both his sons, his livelihood. 
There's a problem with that because you usually don't leave your inheritance to somebody until you die. The younger son, for some reason, wants his inheritance now. We're not told all the details, but it's pretty good in our thinking to realize he wanted out. He was tired of the restrictions, tired of the rules, tired of the limitations. He wanted out. And, and it would be as if he was saying, Dad, I wish you were dead because you don't get an inheritance until after someone dies. Now, I'm not saying that's what he's, thought, he's thinking, but it sure sounds as if he's moving in that direction because it didn't take him long after his father shared his goods, split his goods. It doesn't take him long for him to leave, is what it says. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together what his dad gave him, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. He didn't hang around long. He decided he was going to leave. So he left to the far country. It's interesting that Jesus used the word far country because when people want to get away from God, they move to a place that puts distance between them and him. The younger son went to a far country. There are people that are sitting in a church and are actually in a far country because their heart and their mind is far removed from God. It's not a geographical thing. It's really a heart thing. It's an attitude thing. I don't think the younger son really understood what his father was thinking about when he's thinking about his son. So he goes to the far country and there he takes his father's stuff and wastes it. Wastes it. Wait, easy come, easy go. He didn't work for it. He wasted it. Everything his father gave him, he wasted. A riotous living. What did his father give him? Because what his father gave him, your father gave you. His father gave him time. Where did you think that came from? When you got time, you got it from your dad. The message is simple. Don't waste it because you only have so much time. Nobody knows when the time is up, but everybody knows we only have so much. So the father gave his son time. The father also gave him talent. Where did you think that came from? That comes from your dad. I was reading years ago about uh, Frank Sinatra, who had the golden voice. He, uh, you know, he built a career around his voice. He, he could sing. When he got older, at family gatherings with friends, he would try to entertain because he was known as the golden voice. And he would sing, but he would embarrass his family because he no longer had a voice. You got it. Don't waste it. Because it doesn't last. Whatever the Father has given you is only given to you for a short time. If you're living on this planet and he's given you time and he's given you talent, don't waste it. He's given you life. Where did you think that came from? It comes from Dad. Dad gives life. Don't waste it. We don't have it forever. And there are other things that our Father gives us, and some of the things that our Father gives us we actually don't see, but he's given us opportunities. Don't waste those because you may not get them again. He gives us opportunities. He's even given us friendships. He's given us connections with other people. They are on purpose, and God is a reason for what he's doing. God has given, our Father has given us so many things in order to help us get through this life. And the prodigal son wasted them. In fact, the word prodigal in Scripture and in the dictionary simply means wasteful spending. So it was easy to come by and it was easy to, to give. And as long as he was spending it, his friends were like flies. But when he lost it, his friends flew away. That's the truth about life. But when he had spent all, 
There arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. He knew how to handle plenty. Now he was going to learn how to handle empty. He could spend it, but he never did learn how to deal with empty. He's about ready to learn. He wanted to leave his dad because he wanted to be on his own. Being on your own sometimes leaves you alone. That's what happened to the prodigal. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. To the Jew, that was the lowest occupation you possibly could have. He's with the pigs. And he's homeless. He had a home. Now he has no home. And his life is surrounded by what the pigs eat. And he was so hungry, he even considered eating what the pigs... If, if you don't appreciate it, some people don't appreciate what they have until they lose it. When they lose it, they start thinking. Isn't that odd? We, we don't appreciate our health because we have it. You start to lose it, and you realize, whoa, how much we appreciated it after it's gone. The prodigal son had an attitude, I did it my way. Where did that get him? And so often that's where it gets us, with the pigs. I did it my way. How did that work for you, Jacob, after you stole your brother's birthright and had to live 20 years away from your family, never did see your mother again? How did that work for you? You did it your way. You did it your way, Lot, and what did that happen? Uh, you uh, pitched your, land towards, your tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and you ended up losing everything. You did it your way, Samson, and when you were finished, you were grinding wheat in a dungeon, blind. So often when we do it our way, we don't realize the consequences, but doing it our way. Here's this prodigal. He's, he, he is thinking about filling his stomach with stuff you shouldn't put in your stomach. And there are people that do that today. They are putting stuff into their stomach they shouldn't be putting there. But that's all there is. So that's what they put in. And all the while, all the while this is going on, the father is at home. And would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. And his father was home, waiting, waiting. Waiting for his son to come to his senses, waiting for his son to realize there are consequences in the decisions that you make, waiting for his son to realize, get a tap on the shoulder and a reality check, waiting. Waiting for the problem to kick in to the point where he could see it and his eyes were now open. Waiting for him to experience regret because when regret comes, it comes quickly and harshly. I was thinking about this. Some, sometimes we have to think in the terms of God does wait for us. He, he's waited a long time. For some of us, he's waited longer than others. But he waits. He waits. He's a, he's a father. Fathers know how to wait. He's waiting for you. But as I was thinking about the son who is in the pig's pen, even thinking about eating what they were eating, he was there all the while, his father. He was there all the time. The son didn't realize it, but he's going to. Waiting patiently in line. Because the father never leaves. He was there all the time. 
waiting, waiting for us to come to the place where we realize I lost so much, I had so much. And the prodigal makes a decision. When he came to himself, the father was there all the while. He was back in the memories somewhere, and it was filled with all kinds of other things and plans and suggestions and, and, and purposes that the prodigal had. But, but he was there. He was still there in the recesses of his thinking. He was, he was there. You can't just dismiss your dad. He's there. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? I perish with hunger. I'm here with the pigs, homeless, hungry, in rags. My father's servants have it better than I have. What am I doing here? That's what the father was waiting for. Waiting for the son to come to his senses. That's what he's waiting for us to do, to come to our senses when we realize we have it going with the father. Being independent from the father is really not the best way to go. So he decided he's going to go back. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm going to my father. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. That's his speech he was preparing. And he arose and came to his father. And now, for the first time in his life, he was going to discover what his dad was thinking of him. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He thought his dad was going to tongue lash him. And for the first time, he realized something about his dad he had never known. Dad loved me. He ran to me and put his arms around me, gave me a big hug, kissed me. If you want to know something about your Heavenly Father, you want to know what your Heavenly Father is thinking about you, you go to this story in the 15th chapter of Luke and, and you'll get it all. The father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Give him his identity back. He didn't want to be his son anymore. He was willing to be hired, a hired hand. And his father, no, no, no. Put his sonship back on him. Give him that robe. That's what God wants to do. Our father wants us to have our identity back. Put a ring on his hand because the father wanted him to have his authority back. You know, this is a strange thing. Putting the ring on his hand meant that his father, who had already divided up his inheritance to the son, is giving his son back what he has and allowing him to run the family business. That's what that ring meant. That's what the father thinks of us. And sandals on his feet, give him his dignity back. Servants went around barefoot. This son of mine needs his dignity back. He lost it in the far country. But if you come home, it's waiting for you. What a message. It is the gospel wrapped up in one little simple story. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Put a chair out and let him sit at the table again. He belongs. He's my son. He was dead. But he's alive. He was lost. He's found. The angels rejoice over one sinner that comes to repentance. And so the home was merry again. 
It's like, I called, you answered, and you came to my rescue, and I want to be where you are. Now the son had a brand new appreciation for his dad. He wanted to be where dad was. He never even got around to give his speech because the father doesn't need to hear the speech. We don't, we don't get anything from the father because we have some fancy speech to give him. He saw his son afar off and before he had a chance to say anything, his father ran to him. We need to know something about our dad because that's why Jesus told a story. A certain man, he's talking about our dad, our father. And what we need to know about our father is this now, to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Isn't that what the father did to his son? Above all that he would have even asked or thought Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. We haven't even begun to understand what the Father's heart is until we read the story and realize what the Father thinks of us. What the Father thinks of us is we are his children. What he thinks of us is our past has already been taken care of at Calvary. What he thinks of us is we have a future and he's going to lead us into that future. That's what our Father thinks. And so when I think of what the Father thinks, I got to get on the same page with him. What manner of love does the father have? And the truth in this story, we all know it as the prodigal son, but the truth is it's the prodigal father. If prodigal means wasteful spending, the father did that. He spent his grace, undeserved grace, his mercy, undeserved mercy, he called his son back, undeserved. He poured out his love and compassion on that young man and redeemed him, brought him back. That's what our father wants to do. That's what we call reckless love. Don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming You can't work for grace It's not available to work for it It's freely given to those who need it it wasn't until the prodigal needed, realized, came to his senses, realized, I had better off at my dad's. So the plea in the story, the plea is simply come back home. Come back home. Because that's where we belong. That's where we are, his children. That's where we have our dignity. That's where we have our authority home some have wandered wandered far away far away to the far country but now i'm coming home maybe today you can make that decision in your own heart i'm coming home i've got to come home i've got to come home lord we thank you for the power that's in your story simple message but powerful our Father thinks thoughts of us we would never realize until you told us. I pray you will come and you will strengthen us today with the desire. Some here today may need to come back because they've drifted. Today is a good day to come back 
to the Father on Father's Day. We thank you for it. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. And let the sunlight in as we live go out.